How can there be an argument against this? I genuinely cannot understand. The human genome, the DNA molecule, is an information-bearing molecule. Look up there, EXIT. You see four letters. You know that has a meaning, and you will deduce immediately that whatever physical processes went into producing that, there's a mind behind it. And yet, some of my colleagues can look at the DNA molecule with the word 3.4 billion letters long and say it was chance and the laws of nature. You know, I said to them, tell me the origin of what you do science with, your brain or your mind. And they say, well, the brain is the end product of a mindless, unguided process. And I smile at them and I say, and you trust it. Tell me honestly, if you knew that your computer that you're going to use tomorrow in your lab was the end product of an unguided mindless process, would you trust it? And from every scientist I've asked that question with hesitation, I had the answer, no, I would not. And I said, I see you have a problem. All right. So a few things there. I'm going to start at the, the back end of that, actually. He's basically saying if your brain is the, res the re end result of unguided natural evolutionary processes, do you trust it? And scientists say no. And his conclusion was, well, you have a problem there. It's like, well, dude, you should not trust your brain. That is absolutely correct. You, this is what we call neuropsychological humility. We've been talking about this in the skeptical movement for years. This is the result of understanding how much of a kludge your brain is. Your brain is subject to all kinds of cognitive biases, to heuristics, to perceptual problems, to memory problems. Your brain is not reliable. It is flawed in many ways, and you shouldn't just blindly trust your brain because it did evolve. So, you know, he was trying to say that you should trust your brain. That I think maybe that's his problem, is that he trusts his brain too much. He doesn't realize all of the cognitive biases that his own thinking is subject to. But let's back up to the beginning here. He's essentially making the intelligent design argument that, you know, living things have information and information cannot come from natural blind processes, you know, by chance, for example. But that is kind of assuming the conclusion, right? He's just assuming that natural processes can't result in increases in information. This is definitely one of the premises of intelligent design. But of course, whatever, when did intelligent design really come out? In the late 80s, early 90s? Um, so they've had, you know, they've had 30, 40 years to prove their hypothesis that natural systems cannot generate information, and they completely failed to do so. They, they have not been able to support that premise at all. In fact, it has been utterly destroyed by actual scientists. I like how he says some of my colleagues. Do you mean 99% of your colleagues? You mean the vast majority of scientists? In, the, in basically any of the scientists, but specifically biological scientists, evolutionary scientists, et cetera. Yes, they all pretty much agree that evolution happened, that it can pre increase the amount of information in a system. Now, he, part of the game that they play is they say by quote-unquote random processes, but evolution in, involves many non-random processes, right? Natural selection is a selective process. It isn't a random process process. It is the non-random survival of those, you know, those living things which are better suited to their environment. So we know that living things, that natural processes can increase the amount of information in the system. Genes can get duplicated, for example. Entire chromosomes can duplicate, etc. The amount of just raw genetic information can increase over time through many processes. And we also know that there could be differential survival of that information which produces something useful, something that gives a survival advantage you know, to the individuals who have it. And so there's non-random processes as well. So you have this kind of two-stroke engine, as I, as I often say. You have this, you know, this, not this process of evolution that involves things that increase the amount of information, things that increase the variability of that information, and then non-random selection, natural selective processes. And in combination, they can produce, especially given millions, billions of years, right, hundreds of millions of years for multicellular life, they can produce very complicated, information-dense systems 
Now, the real question is, you know, he's basically just making, again, making this 40-year-old massively debunked argument that natural systems, that essentially bottom-up systems cannot produce specific information, you know, specified information, as the intelligent designers say. Um, that's been basically been, you know, destroyed, that premise. But what he's really saying is um, that, you know, that you can't have, it can't work with bottom-up processes. But what we should be saying is, how do we tell the difference between a bottom-up information system versus a top-down information system? Does DNA look like something that was designed by a designer? Or does it look like something that evolved through natural but messy processes? And there, it's pretty much a home run for the, it looks like something that's the product of bottom-up evolution. The, right, it's messy. Again, it's a kludge. There's a lot of junk DNA in there that doesn't appear to do anything. It's very inefficient in a lot of ways. It looks like something that just evolved and over time with pieces being added and you know, random stuff happening rather than something that was clean and you know, designed from the top down by one intelligent designer. Does not look that way at all. If you're interested in that topic, there's a ton of information online. If you look up the uh, molecular evidence for evolution or genetic evidence for evolution, you will see all of the many lines, independent lines of evidence that show you that DNA, that um, in fact all you know, living things, but all the aspects of biology, but if you want to look just at the molecular evidence for, you know, for life being the result of, of organic evolution, is pretty overwhelming. Uh, yes, DNA looks like a bottom-up, naturally evolved system of information, not something that was created top-down by a designer. Absolutely. This has been debated, you know, for, again, decades ago. The intelligent designers tried this gambit in the 80s, 90s. They failed. They got no traction because they're wrong, because their arguments are bad, their arguments are wrong, and the scientific community pretty easily dealt with the nonsense that they were selling. But of course, that's not stopping them from continuing to try to sell it. I guess now they're doing it on TikTok. <laughs>